Hey guys, so I thought I would make a really nice, light, airy video today about something that uh, really is not important at all because I have a lot of stuff going on in my head and in my heart that um, I just don't know how to articulate right now. And so I thought for today I would make you guys a video about one of the easiest house plants that you can own because I know there's a lot of people who message me all the time and they say, Tina, um, I really want to buy a house plant, but I kill every single house plant I've ever had. So can you recommend one for me? And so uh, this is him. So behind me here is Daddy Pothos. He is the father of every Pothos plant I have in my house because they are the easiest plant to keep and the easiest plant to propagate, uh, which means you can cut pieces off of them and turn them into more plants. And so this plant, I want to say Alex and I have had it since our first apartment or since our first house together. So it's either seven or eight years old and, um, and it's grown so much. Like you guys don't even know. So... So hold on one sec, let me turn this around. So here he is. He is the dad of every pothos plant that we have in our house. So um, I have cut him up frequently and turned him into other plants, which I'm gonna show you how to do today. Uh, but basically, as you can see, they just kind of grow like the same amount of um, vines that they have. They keep growing the same amount all the time. They don't really make any new vines and they just get longer and longer and they start to look really just like spindly as you can see like not very dense and so um, what I like to do is just keep on cutting him shorter and shorter and taking all the pieces and making new plants and a lot of them I have given away but a lot of them I have around my house. Pothos is a super super easy plant because um, you can basically not water them for a month and they'll survive and you can overwater them and they'll survive and you can pick off like most of the leaves on them and they'll survive and you can cut them back and they'll survive and they actually really don't even need very much light. So right now, as you can see, he is hanging in front of my bedroom window, but in every single house that we've lived in, he has always been our bathroom plant. And so he's always gotten light from like a tiny little window and, and grown really well and it's never been a problem. When we were in our other house and he was in the bathroom, um, he actually got to over 15 feet long. And so that's when I cut him all up and made a whole bunch of other plants out of him. So over here on this side of the room is one of his most recent babies. Um, this one's, oh, I don't know, maybe like four months old. And I put a whole bunch of different vines in this pot. One of them is growing really long. I find that whenever I propagate a pothos plant, even though I'll put like 10 or 20 in here, it always kind of grows like one for a really long time before all the rest start growing. So this is one of the most recent babies and he just lives up here on my shelf that's supposed to be nice but it's just full of nonsense all the time so yeah um that is one of the babies and hmm downstairs this is one of his other most recent babies and i think this one's actually younger than the one that's in the bedroom we got a whole bunch of short little sticky things in there that are all gonna grow eventually so uh this one's maybe like two or three months old as well but it's definitely younger than the other one so this one here that is over my desk he is also one of the babies of the plant that I have upstairs. And he's actually probably like six or seven feet long too. But as you can see, I have all the branches like coiled up and folded over. And so I'm probably going to end up propagating him too, but I don't like to have too many little like cups all over the house with plants in them. And so I'm not gonna do him today, but um, this one is probably about, I wanna say a year and a half old. So this is like a year and a half of growth after being propagated. So that, sorry, this is like, my house is really messy right now. That's a pothos too, but that's a different kind of pothos. It is called a, I think a silver satin pothos. I do want to say right now that um, when I said that pothos is like the easiest plant that you can own and like it's really good for beginners and stuff, you really want to stick to like the regular like leafy green uh, pothos. I forget what like the, the regular one is called, but you just want to stick to like the standard everyday pothos because there are a whole bunch of different kinds. So for instance, the one that I just showed you, and then this here, this one is a neon pothos. All of the different plants, all the different species of pothos are really, really different in their needs. So for instance, like this neon pothos is like probably the neediest pothos that I've ever owned. It just wants like so much sunlight and so much water. And if you miss watering for like even a couple of days, it starts to just turn brown and then those leaves fall off. So when I say that pothos is the easiest, um, it's just like the standard, I'm gonna try and find the name of it for you, but um, that's the one that you wanna get if you want a really easy plant. 
Uh, this one is maybe just less than a year old and it's been growing okay. Like it hasn't really oh, gotten any significant length yet. But um, yeah, I mean, it takes time in the beginning and then it just kind of like takes off one day. Okay, so now I have some scissors here and this part always hurts my heart so much. I hate cutting plants because I just, I don't know, like they're living things and like, I know that it's not like painful or anything, but it just, it seems so sad that like, you know, this little living organism spent so much time and so much energy just like building all these pieces and I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so this part is sad for me, but we are going to um, cut the pathos. Oh, okay, so there's like a part of me that wants to just keep everything kind of like here. Um, but then there's another part of me that wants to cut him really short because Matthew is always pulling the leaves off and uh, For some reason he's like my first kid that I've ever had that like cannot leave the plants alone, but for now We'll do like a long trim and then maybe in the future. I will do a shorter one Whoa, there's some craziness happening here All right, so there is one of them There is another one there. Here is the third one. Oh. <laughs> okay, so there is our plant now, and I am gonna show you what I'm gonna do with all these cuttings. And that's the ukulele that I was using to hold the phone up because my tripod's missing. Okay, so this is the end where I cut it off, and um you can see that there. And then this is the end where the pothos was growing and um, this will actually just keep growing. If I don't cut it off, it will just, it will just still stay and be the same vine that was growing in the other plant growing out of a new pot. Um, but what we have to do is we have to make roots on this end. And how we're gonna do that is we are going to um, soak this in water and it always takes a different amount of time. Like sometimes it'll take two weeks and sometimes it'll take six weeks and you really don't know. And so what I'm going to do is um, well, I guess I'll show you first. On the pothos, wherever you see a leaf, you're going to see these tiny little nodes. See that there? Um, that little node can become a root or it can become a new branch if the branch gets cut. And so in this case, um, you can see our little node there and then you can see uh, another little one right here. They're usually where the leaves grow off of the vine, but sometimes you can find them in different places. and. These little nodes and this area right here, it's kind of like a human stem cell. It has got cells in it that can turn into anything. And so what we're gonna do in order that it sits in the water nicely and this leaf, if it's sitting in the water, it's just gonna rot. So we'll just take that off, just use scissors. There we go. Um, and then actually I'm gonna take this leaf off too. So now when I put this in water, it's going to have ample opportunity to grow roots from, oh, there's a third node there. So there's there can be roots there, there, there could be roots there, or there's a fourth one there. And so basically, if this sits in water, hopefully, and most likely, it's going to get roots in a couple of those places. And then we're gonna put it in dirt again after a while, and it's just gonna carry on growing. So yeah. I have two old, I don't know, jelly jars maybe, whatever was in them, I don't know. And I'm just going to uh, put that in there. That's all. Every time that you see the water get like a little cloudy or maybe even whenever you remember like every couple of days you can change the water um, because fresh water is good for him but uh, yeah basically we just put him in there and we wait for these to turn into roots and then we will plant him in dirt after he's made some really good strong roots and and then he'll just keep growing as if I never cut him off. So the next one that I'm gonna show you is one of the long ones. I think that this is the longest one. And so instead of just making like one long vine out of this, I'm gonna cut him in half to make two vines. Um, also, oh, it's like a big mess over here. I don't know, it grew kind of funny in this point. And so I'm just gonna cut this off. There we go. And so now, um, We'll talk about that after. Anyways, so now I have this one long vine. And so in order to be able to have a place to put them in the water, I'm going to clip a couple of leaves off just like I did last time. I'm actually gonna take three this time though because they were really close together. So that's the part that's going to be in the water. And then I'm gonna make a cut here. 
Okay, so what is going to happen with this piece now? Because if you guys remember, um, these nodes that are resting in the water are going to become roots, but now I've cut the end off, so how is it gonna grow? Well, like I said before, the nodes can also become a new vine. So from this node, usually, but every once in a while, it goes up to the next one, we are going to eventually get a new vine. And this is gonna be a lot harder for the plant because he has to grow now uh, new roots and a new vine using just the energy that's stored inside of him because he's gonna just be sitting in water, right? Like not soil or nutrients. So um, it's definitely harder for the plant and it does take a longer time, but this will also become another vine. And so we will put him in the water too. And then this is the other piece that we just cut off. As you know, uh, once he gets roots, he is just gonna continue growing as if I never cut him at all. So we will just, see this is gonna be nice and long by just sniffing one leaf off. So there we go. And now hopefully he will get roots from here. But if you notice, we also have, remember I said you can have a random node? We got a random node right there. So we might get roots from there too. And we'll put him in the water. These leaves are nothing. You cannot do anything with the leaf. There is no uh, stem cells. There's no meristematic tissue in this leaf at all. So it's just garbage. This leaf is garbage. This leaf is garbage. This one is garbage. But remember when I said that the top of the last one that I cut was like all coily and stuff like that? I was left with this, which looks like a piece of garbage, honestly. But this can grow with an entire plant, this little tiny piece of garbage. So this I will also just put in the water and hope for the best. And most of the time it takes a little longer, um, but it turns into a plant too. So we'll put that guy in the water as well. And now I'm gonna just do, whoa, there's a leaf in the way. <laughs> Um, now I'm just going to do the same thing with these last two pieces and then I will show you what I do with my jar. This vine had been cut to propagate before and so the original vine was actually this one. But then remember I said the node can turn into another vine? This is the point where the node turned into another vine. And so here you can see where I cut the last time I propagated the daddy pothos. And then uh, here is the new piece that it grew, which uh, <laughs> it worked so hard to grow and I just cut it back off. And so I'm actually gonna cut this here and I'm gonna put both this piece and this piece in the water and we'll see if anything happens to this, but probably won't cause it's already pretty used up. Okay, so we have an empty jar because I managed to fit them all in one jar and now I'm gonna make a little plant hanger and we're gonna hang it in the front room. And lastly, um, this is the neon pothos that I said was really finicky and hard to grow. I am going to take a piece of him off because my mother-in-law really wants one. So I just thought I would add it in the video because it's gonna be in the pot and y'all are gonna be like, why is one of them different? So, oh, this makes me so sad to cut this one. Okay, I'm gonna cut him really high up. Can I cut him really high up? Should I do this? What am I doing? No, I mean, I cut him low down. Okay. There. Oh, it hurts so much. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to make like the easiest, fastest plant hanger ever now. Um, I am standing on my bathtub, so hopefully I don't fall because that will be funny, but hurt a lot. <laughs> and we have got plant hangers actually probably like 10 in every room of our house because I'm obsessed with plants. And so that is what we have. So basically, I'm going to hang this first string over the loop like that. And I'm gonna pull it down to just a little further than I would like it to go. Cause we gotta account for like knots and we gotta account for the angle and stuff like that. Let's cut it here. Come on, scissors. I'm gonna make two more. I'm gonna make three total. So now, as you can see, I have got six strings hanging down from here. Um, if you'd like, you can put a knot in the top, which I think I will do. So I'm just gonna put a knot up here. Okay. Okay, I have pulled it nice and tight. So now I'm gonna just take two of them. I'm gonna bring them down here to whatever length. I'm gonna tie a knot. 
Uh, this is going to be approximately the top of where your jar or your pot is, so make sure the knot is where you want that to be. Um, and then I'm going to take two more. Whoop. I'm going to try to put a knot the same distance down, the same length from the top, till it's the same height as the other knots. So as you can see, two knots. Take my last one, and I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to take, that's the easiest way to show you, so this is two of my knots. I'm going to take one string from each of them, and I'm going to pull it together like this, and I'm going to tie that in a knot. Cool. So now I have got this, and then I have this one, and so I'm going to take the end of one of these, yep, and I'm going to take this one, and I'll do this to show you. I'm going to tie this right here in a knot. And you're going to try and make that knot uh, the same distance from this knot as this one is. So there we go. Now I have this. And so I'm going to take this side and this side, and I'm going to tie them in a knot, like so. And now we have this little space in here. We've created this little circle. And so what we're going to do is we're going to gather them all up at the bottom and tie the bottom in a knot too. And now we have got a plant hanger. Super easy and they cost like less than a dollar. So I'm going to get my pot of crazy vines and branches here. For the sake of the video, I'm going to put the jar in and then I'm going to put the vines in. So our jar is just going to doo -doo -doo, fit right in there like that. Look at that, it's so pretty. Okay, this is a little crazy. This needs to like loosen up a bit, but other than the fact that it is being wild, <laughs> look how cute it is. So this is where our plants are going to propagate now. Here is our neon pothos for Alex's mom. There's the uh, mangled little one that we don't know is going to turn into something or not, but we always put them in anyways because you never know. All right, so there is our new little plant hanger and he's hanging there and he will be there for probably a month. And then I will get a pot of soil and I will plant all those guys and they'll start growing into a new plant just like this one here did. Yeah, he will grow again, and I guess that's all. So guys, if I remember, I will come back in a month and I'll make you a video of, um, you know, the roots that those guys have grown and stuff like that. And if you want, I will also keep track of how they're growing on my Instagram page. Then you can see the progress in between now and then. But that's all I really wanted to tell you guys today. Uh, once again, if you are looking for a really, really easy house plant that is very forgiving and doesn't need a lot of light and doesn't really mind what kind of water scheduling it's on, um, I would recommend Pothos very much. And it's very, very easy to take um, I think that was like a $7 pothos eight years ago and now he is in like five different places in my house and also lives in like most of my friends houses too. So yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Uh, thank you for um, listening to me ramble about things that don't mean anything to keep my mind away from things that do mean a lot right now. <laughs> um, I guess I will talk to you guys all soon. Bye.